Dusty, who works here at the store and does the website and all of our back office work, uh, he's done all the graphics. He, everything that's been written or printed about this show, he did it. Most any guys get kind of ghettoized in the back of a, of a hall or sometimes in a room, you know, where they're just kind of there. And um, so we had thought about, there, there are certain guests that we felt like we wanted to have. We want to have as diverse a, a face to the show as possible. And I think it was probably my favorite one yet. Was, although I had the least time of ever for shopping or talking or carousing, but it, it definitely, the energy in the room was incredible. Incredible. If you look over there, there's two alcoves where artists are working right now on all kinds of different, uh, um, you know, pieces that are done in, uh, some of them are painted, some of them are done in marker, some of them are done in uh, all kinds of different mediums. But they're, uh, they're all creating new works of art. They're gonna be auctioned off tonight. Yeah, it's pretty special that, uh, that Adam and all the rest of those artists do what they do for the show. Uh, I think it's a testimony that, that, um, that they enjoy being there. You know, they spend that time, a day, sometimes two days, creating a piece of art that can be auctioned off to benefit the show. And, um, it's just wonderful. We have a piece from a young unknown artist. <laughs> Tim Townsend has oh. one million dollars. <laughs> oh, four thousand. Okay. Oh. We're I didn't have the four grand to buy a uses piece on the Invisible Woman, which would have been nice, but oh well. For a single piece, I think that's definitely a record. Um. What is a writer? Now, I'm, you know what, I, I'll pick you, right? Because you're sitting there and you're like cannon fodder. If I ask you the question, what is a writer, what's your answer? Someone expresses their thoughts on paper. Okay. The answer to the question is there's no right answer. A writer is whatever, you know, if you are going to be a writer, it's whatever you interpret it to be. My answer was I feel that a writer is a good observer. You know, when you're standing in line with a, an artist or a writer to get their autograph, you, you have a chance to ask them maybe one, two questions at the most. Um, and that's kind of wasted, you know. Um, you're, you're getting the answer, but everybody else in line can't really hear it. So I think panels are important that um, uh, you, you get to know these guys a little bit better. What's the biggest difference between when you, back in the 60s and 70s and the storylines and the storylines you see today? What Stan did was introduce a, a level of self-referential humor, and what that's evolved into is a, an imposition of a kind of psychological complexity that to a great extent for my money, the material can't support. Um, it's like, this is a guy who runs around dressed in a mask and, and, and long underwear, beating the living crap out of people he doesn't know. <laughs> and um, because he knows it's the right thing to do. Um, if, as a kid, I can accept that with all good grace, and I'm perfectly good with that. As an adult, I can draw it. <laughs> I mean, I, I've known Howard Chaykin for years, haven't, but I don't see him much anymore. So we get it together, suddenly I find, you know, we have things in common, or divergent that I didn't know before. And I find that interesting. I'm hoping that if I find it interesting, maybe the, the audience will as well. Craft in comics today is probably the best it's ever been. Some of the heart is gone. Some of the sense of, a lot of the sense of wonder is gone, but the craft is brilliant. The, the wordsmithing, the art is unbelievable. Um, but they take what we did in 22 pages 
and in the 40s was done in eight pages, and they spread it out to four issues. This panel was a perfect example. There were actually really good questions, and I thought this is one of the best panels I've ever been on. When I was literally just breaking into the industry, uh, he invited me to Heroes Con and gave me like this, this he sort of touted me in his program book is like, you know, this, this, is, the, this is the greatest thing since, since, since sliced bread. And uh, I'll never forget that. He, he really believed in me. He didn't even know who I was. But he just, uh, you know, he believed in my artwork and the stuff I was doing. And, and we've been very, very close friends ever since. It was right around the time that, that my parents had moved to Florida. So my father would always make the commute from, from Florida here to North Carolina to see, to see me at this convention. And my father actually became a mainstay at the convention and, and Shelton would provide him with his own room and it was it's just it was just a really great family experience uh, and then uh, you know uh, my father recently passed away so so he's no longer here but every time I come to this convention now I think of my dad and um, and since then you know he's welcomed my family now you know I'm, I'm a dad now and uh, my daughter's first convention was Heroes Con. The comic book industry you know stepped up big right after 9-11 with tributes and uh, you know, individual stories were told, and a lot of a lot of people uh, I think came into comic book stores after 9/11 because of some of those things. You couldn't go uh, through something like 9/11 and not comment on it. So in, in some ways, comics are very serious. Um, a lot of those tributes did was uh, it brought into focus who who the true heroes in the world are. You know the guys who risk their lives every day that don't have superpowers for the good of the of the world, you know? The, the military, the, the police officers, the firemen. It's because everybody wants to be a hero. And in this day and age, the the war going on and stuff, people want true heroes. We all look for heroes in some way, shape, or form, whether they're, they're fictional or real. And I think having paper heroes, as it were, gives you an opportunity to really escape. And I think escapism is the biggest part of comics. That's what got me into it. The Green Goblin says to Spider-Man, you, if you walk out of this door, I've got people with sniper rifles that are going to blow your loved one's head off. So you better kill me. And Spider-Man says on the page, on the very last page, he says, I'll kill you. They said, no way, Spider-Man would never kill anybody. And I said, I agree with you. But the point is this, what makes him a hero is the fact that he has a capacity for anger, but he chooses to override it. He, if he had no capacity for anger, well, I wouldn't be writing Spider-Man, I would be writing Jesus Christ Weekly. Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. Wonder Woman's my favorite. I liked cross-gen comics, but then they went out of business, they went bankrupt. So, I I'm kind of searching now for a new comic. I'm a big Teen Titans I like Dogwitch. It's kind of an indie, um, indie one. I, he likes more um, DC, Superman, Batman. Oh, I'm a Batman fan from way back. Can't you tell I got the body for it? I mean, I definitely need the mask to cover the face, so you know. It's... When he was a child, he was an underdog, and he got older, and he got, uh, he decided to fight for justice. I think that's a major appeal too. And he gets to use little cool gadgets too. My favorite is Captain America. That's because he stands for what America is and a lot of what I believe in. I've had compliments over the years already that, that I've helped build a, um, a fan base in, in the Carolinas, you know.